Hi everyone, nice to see you back. Love to see those smiling faces. I'm Rick Michelle, this is Visible Painting Basics. And we're gonna paint some panel doors. I've got two doors that were actually given to me. Uh, this is a six panel door, and the other one is a four panel door. But I said, ah, hey, who cares? This door has always been painted before. I've given it a pretty good sand with 180 sandpaper just to give it some bite. It doesn't need an undercoat. I'm gonna put, again, gloss acrylic straight over the top of that. But being that I'm gonna put white over know, some sort of apricot mustardy color, I'm gonna have to put at least two coats of paint over that. But other than that, it's in pretty good nick. I'm using a, a Purdy XL Glide. Um, I can't remember if that's soft or semi-rigid or something like that, but that's a good paintbrush. It's a three inch brush, so it holds plenty of paint. I'd probably recommend a two inch brush for you guys, and maybe even if it's on angles, for me it doesn't make any difference, but for you guys, I think the angles, I think you're gonna find that a little bit easier. But one of the things is, these, these are Purdy brushes, and uh, this is also a, a Purdy brush. I think they're all XL. This would be a semi-rigid. This is what's called a block brush. This is for cutting in. The same as that is for cutting in. You see how the cutting in brushes? It's skinnier. These cutting in brushes are skinnier right here. See the difference? This is a block brush for cutting in ceilings and walls and stuff like that. This is my probably my favorite brush for cutting in almost anything. You're probably going to find that a tad bit too large to use. The job I'm doing isn't really cutting in anything, it's just slopping paint on there. I can actually paint this door with a block brush and I would still get away with it. And if that's all I had, I'd be fine. But with you guys, use a dedicated trim brush. Um, I've used cheap brushes. You can't cut in with brushes. They don't hold as much paint. They, they splatter more. They've got hairs that seem to want to go in all different kinds of directions. The very first thing that I do, and what I recommend you do, is to paint the edges. You always paint the back edge first, then what I call the striker edge, which is the door that closes against your jam. And then you, you close the door, paint the back, open it up, and paint that. So let's go through that. So I'm taking it nice and easy. I'm cutting that in. There's nothing really to cut in. It's just a, a floating edge there, but I'm just cutting it so that my brush is my bristles of the brush don't go in and get onto the jam. Because I've kind of slopped over on the face of this door, I just kind of just knock that down a little bit with the side of the brush. Nice dry. <clears throat> now with this edge, I do put a bit of a cloth down just to catch the splatters. Now this isn't a primer, there's raw edges. The door itself, this door itself, has already got a, a factory primer. Uh, it's just a water-based primer. The edges, are, the edges are bare timber and I'm just putting over acrylic gloss. That's gonna be the primer. It doesn't have to be primed. With, an, with a water-based acrylic, it doesn't have to be primed. If I was gonna paint this with the oil-based enamel, then most definitely it would have to be primed or undercoated. I'd probably just use an undercoat. My two edges are, are painted. The next thing I do is I paint the back door, the back of the door first. I close the door right down at the bottom of the jam. I put down a screwdriver or a piece of timber or a caulking gun, it doesn't matter. It just, just stops the door from closing in on itself so I don't get any paint on that little striker plate. Let me just paint the back of this because it's, it's difficult to film in here. So it's kind of, I don't have any room. So let me paint the back. I'll be right with you and we'll paint the front. So it's the same thing here. Put your stick or your caulking gun or a screwdriver at the back, right at the corner of the door. So it doesn't close it. So it doesn't hit the wall or the skirting. Readjust your drop cloth. I've got a, a sheet here. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. You can actually see what I'm going to be doing now. Normally this door would be all the way open uh, where it hits the back of the wall. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to paint. But so I've got it fixed there so it can't move, but so that you guys can actually see what's going to happen here. And again, I've given it a really light rub with 180 sandpaper so it's nice and smooth. And really that's 
we're not trying to create a, a key here because no matter what this is going to grip onto the first coat no matter what you do so you're simply just making that just as smooth as possible our main goal here is to get a really super smooth and professional finish again i painted both the edges first um, I went inside, I closed the door like I showed you with the screwdriver and I painted the back side. So this is the only side left to paint. So with your, with your brush loaded, you're just jamming it in the corner, working it away, jamming it in the other corner. You got plenty of paint on there. You're not worried about what the paint looks like at the moment. It can look really, really bad. So I've got plenty of paint there. And if you could just look at that, it looks terrible. And here with a ginger touch, what we call breading, we just give that, okay, just like that. And it's exactly the same thing. You'll find that if you happen to really poke, 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 and really start trying to get the paint in there, most likely you haven't got enough paint on your brush. It's one of the biggest mistakes a DIY makes is not never having enough paint on their brush. You di DIY dips in, scrapes all the paint off, and then they go to work. Now that's still going to work, but you're going to have five times as many dips. So if I can implore you to get out of that habit, of scraping your paint off, you're going to go faster, a lot faster. Again, gingerly, I'm going to butter that. Brushing is really is one of those things. Uh, the more experience you have, uh, the easier it becomes. Sometimes well, we can go the valleys first. And then a nice finish off on that face. Again, same thing. <laughs> Oops, I've already done that one. Too busy yapping. Now, before I get on my haunches, this is what I do. I come up here, remember? As if these are boards. I've got a video out, and it's called Paint a Door by Numbers. You know, pause the video here, look at that, come back, and, you'll, and then you'll see exactly why I'm painting this door the way I'm painting it. One other thing, when I got this door, it was already painted. Now I knew by looking at it, I can usually tell by looking at it or feeling it, if it's an oil-based enamel or if it's a water-based paint. So it's another reason why I stuck with water-based. I much prefer oil-based enamels on doors because I think you get a nicer finish. Irrespective, you've got to know what paint is already there. You can't just go ahead and put water-based paint over an oil-based paint because it's just not going to stick. You build, you know the old trick, you take that fingernail and you rub it and it just kind of just peels off. And that's the biggest reason why is because you're putting a water base over oil base or vice versa. So you really do have to make sure you know what you're painting over. I've got another video out and it's called how to tell what paint is on your surface. It shows you how to find out what type of paint is on your surface that you're going to paint. And you'll know in a matter of 10 seconds. It's so easy. Watch that video. I'll put a card above here or there'll be a link in the description below. You want to paint the door as quick as, as you can paint the door. In summertime, you're going to have less time because of the weather. Where I've got right now, it's winter. I've got a lot of playtime with my paint. It's going to take quite a while before this even starts to set. 
different ball game with oil base. But with water base, you got plenty of time. So if you're rolling your edges or you're getting a little drip here and there, you can just go back and just really gingerly butter that out of there. So with the top of the door done, now I get on my haunches. <laughs> it gets tougher when you get older, I can guarantee you. Now I certainly don't expect you to go near this fast. You're probably going to take three, four, five times longer. And that's okay, especially if you've got the time uh, without it drying and setting up. Once you start setting up, oh my gosh. Uh, you're going to get what's known as flashing, and you'll know, gosh, <laughs> you'll be going, oh my God, what's happening? So try to do it, push yourself a little bit, and put, and try to go maybe a little faster than what you might be comfortable with. Okay, so that's both doors done. Uh, I probably spent more time talking than actually painting, but I painted those doors probably in probably 25 minutes.